Welcome, listeners. Get cozy, for we are about to hear the life of a holy man. Let's begin. Refugee, Firefly, Radio Operator, Tramp of God. These are the nicknames that people used to call Saint Paisios of the Holy Mountain at different times. The nickname Refugee has a deep meaning in the life of Arsenios, the name of Saint Paisios from birth, which began with a great migration. The saint was nicknamed Firefly because of the spiritual light reflected in his eyes. While on Mount Sinai, Paisios participated in carpentry work and helped restore icons. People started coming to him with prayer requests. The monk received everyone with love and reverence, bowing to the ground even in front of young people. Considering the priesthood, Paisios associated this ministry with the need to give oneself completely to people and participate in their lives. Fearing manifestations of human gratitude and deep immersion in worldly life, he decided that he would help the suffering with solitary prayer. He took a blessing for life in the wilderness and settled in the cell of the saints Galaxian and Episteme. Here in the Egyptian wilderness, the elder had to enter into battle with demonic forces. Without pronouncing the name of the unclean spirit, he jokingly called him Tangalashka. The life of Saint Paisios describes his conversation with a future nun, who asked the elder if he had ever seen the devil. Yes, the elder replied. Do you know how handsome he is? Truly great is the love of God that keeps us from seeing the devil. Without it, all mankind would die of fear. Describing his spiritual struggle with the enemy of the human race, he said, the devil can really be tangibly transformed into a man, an animal and the like. It possesses some other nature that we do not know. You can see and sense him, and then you bind him with prayer, and he immediately disappears right before your eyes. In 1964, due to health problems, Paisios returned to Athos and settled in the Iberian Scathe. He developed asthma, which led to a severe lung disease, causing the elder immense suffering, but unable to diminish his spiritual gifts. In 1966, after a difficult operation, he lost a significant part of his lungs. However, God granted him another 28 years of monastic service, filled with suffering and true Christian love. Overcoming pain, he continued to receive pilgrims in his cell and helped everyone in need, often literally taking people's sufferings upon himself. Since May 1978, Father Paisios lived in the Panaguda cell of the Kutlumusiu Monastery. Thousands of people flocked there. In 1982, he visited Jerusalem and Sinai. After spending a short time in the monastery of St. Catherine, he set off on his way back to Mount Athos, where he continued the work that he himself once defined as being a radio operator between people and God. Elder Paisios died on July 12, 1994, in the monastery of St. John the Apostle in the village of Suroti, near Thessaloniki. He was buried there, and thousands of pilgrims immediately started coming to his grave. What will follow now are two stories about some of his miracles. Miracles through prayers to Elder Paisios. Many saints who have passed into eternity long ago continue to perform miracles, appearing to people and healing them. There are many testimonies of help coming not only at the saint's grave, but even after a short prayer to him anywhere in the world. Countless people have received a miraculous answer from God through the prayers of the Holy Elder Paisios of the Holy Mountain. Among them, there are especially many of those suffering from cancer and demonic attacks. The elders' personal items exude an indescribable fragrance and also possess miraculous powers. The Miracle of Saving a Child Father Christos Sandalis, parish priest from the village of Karasia in the Nea Mikaniona area near Thessaloniki and father of nine children, testifies, My children once climbed onto the flat roof of our house with an opened hatch of the lighting shaft going four floors down. The children began to jump over this hatch. One of my sons, a six-year-old boy with a speech delay, tripped over the hatch and fell into the shaft. With a trembling heart, I opened the shaft door on the first floor, preparing to see a terrible sight. Imagine my amazement when I saw my son, yellow with fear, but unharmed. I took him to the hospital. After examining the boy, the doctors confirmed that there was not a scratch on him, and not the slightest fracture. We understood that a miracle had happened. I thought that the child was saved by the miraculous icon of the Most Holy Theotokos, kept in one of our village churches. I brought my son to the icon and asked him, Was it her that saved you? No, the boy said. He led me to a photograph of Elder Paisios and began to point his finger at it, making it clear that it was the Elder that had saved him. A Miraculous Incident 
This is the testimony of Mr. Nicholas Sinaris, a resident of the city of Paphos in Cyprus. I am a plumber. One day in July 1997, after finishing work, I was loading the tools in my car. It was getting dark, and it was hard for me to see a drying line made of a piece of wire stretched next to my vehicle, whose sharp end was sticking out. It was bent like a hook, about two centimeters long. As I was bending over to load my tools in the car, this hook became stuck right in my eye. I froze in place like a hooked fish. With all my might, I screamed for help. The house owner saw me and said that he was going to pull out the wire. I refused, fearing that through lack of experience, he would make me blind. I asked him to bring me wire cutters so that I could cut off the wire and go to the emergency room. While he was looking for wire cutters, I cried because I felt sorry for my three children whose father, as I was sure, was about to become blind. At that moment, a thin man dressed in a black cassock appeared in front of me. When I saw him, I crossed myself. I started to have chills. I could feel his hand taking me below the cheek and pushing my head up. At the same instant, the wire came out of my eye. When the owner brought the wire cutters, there was no more need for them. He took me to the emergency room. The doctors examined me and did not believe my story. There was a cut mark right on the pupil. They gave me an ointment and told me to wear a bandage for three or four days. On the following day, I went to the store. On the wall, I saw a photograph of the man who had appeared to me. I asked the shop owner who it was. She told me it was a very famous monk whose name was Paisios. I wanted to buy that photo from her by any means because it was priceless to me. However, the photo was just as dear to her and she gave me a book about Elder Paisios instead. I read that book in a day. Today I treasure it as a sacred relic. That was the holy life of St. Paisios in short. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you.